whiskey is getting expensive. Inflation has soared to 6.9% in the three months to March. And people are more concerned about how quickly prices are rising. Things are becoming a lot more expensive. And the, the cost of delivery goes up. Says that fresh food prices are now rising at their fastest pace in a decade. But it's eye-watering to see something from only 10 or 15 years ago. That's when it smarts, because you can see that the price has increased. Prices are going up and up and up and up. In recent times, the price of whiskey has been exploding due to inflation due to a bunch of other factors. A lot of YouTube channels talk about favorite whiskeys being the Long Row or a Springbank, but even whiskeys like this are becoming harder and harder to find and more and more expensive where we have to end up buying them on the secondary market and it's just not feasible for most people who just want a good value tasty whiskey. However, there is good news. I still think there is great value whiskey out there, but the hard part is, actually finding them. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of whiskies you can choose from at the shop or from an online store. And that's why I've made a list. So I'm Phil and I'm gonna fill you in about my top best value whiskies of 2022. This list is not a whiskey for beginners list. You know, those 40% watered down kind of whiskies that you would have with ice. This list is for people who are enthusiastic about whiskey or really trying to get into whiskey, build a collection, but on a budget, but you don't want budget whiskey. Now, side note, obviously all the whiskies on this list are based on the prices I paid for them in New Zealand. However, since I'm in a very small market, not one of the bigger markets like Europe or the States where you can get some pretty good discounts. Um, I'm pretty confident that some of the whiskies on this list should still be good value in your market if I can get them for a good price way over here. Now people have different preferences, they have different tastes, so I've divided this list up into different categories depending on what you prefer or maybe what you want to explore. So there's sherry, there's smoky, and then there's the ex-bourbon kind of spirit forward classic whiskey. So let's start with that, the ex-bourbon cask whiskey. All right, let's get to the first whiskey. So the first whiskey on the list is the Aaron 10. Now with most sort of 10 year old whiskies in New Zealand, you're expecting to pay around $100. However, this Aaron 10 I got for $75. It's not 40% like most of those other 10 year old whiskies. It's 46%, it has a lot going for it. It's natural color, it's non-chill filtered. I just love the flavor of it. I've done a whole review on this whiskey. I love those sort of tropical notes, those toffee apple notes. And it's had a lot of hype around it recently as well. Last year it kind of cleaned out the online Scotch whiskey awards for the best kind of entry level core range whiskey, but look, I don't think this is the best whiskey ever. I don't want you to go on thinking, wow, this is gonna blow my mind. But in the context of a 10 year old at $75, I think the Aaron 10 really shines, which is why I think it's a great value whiskey. All right, next one. So the next whiskey on the list is the Glen Caddam 10, and I got this whiskey for $80. And like the Aaron 10, it has a lot going for it. It's bottled at 46%, it's unchill filtered, it's natural color, and I love the flavors on it. The sort of lemon tart notes, the sort of honey oats notes, and it's a really delicate malt. You know, when people talk about kind of a spirit forward malt, I'm often thinking of the Glen Caddam 10. You know, it hasn't been kind of bombed with some cask with you know, a real heavy influence on it. It hasn't had heaps of kind of smoky kind of notes added to it. It just really lets the spirit speak. And in fact, I've done a whole review on this whiskey as well. And some of you did say that in your markets, it was a lot more expensive. Um, but I do think if you can find the Glen Caddam 10 for a good price where you are, it's definitely one to have on the shelf. Next whiskey. So the next whiskey on this list is the Deanston 12. And I only paid $82 for this, so it's a 12 year old and it's only $2 more than the Glen Caddam 10. And you're getting two years more worth of age. And this one, it's bottled at 46.3%. It's unchill filtered, it's natural color. Compared to these two, has a little bit more of those biscuity notes. Deanston, it's a reliable, good value whiskey. Okay. So the next whiskey on the list is the Glen Scotia 15. Now I have been informed that it has had some ex sherry cask sort of mixed in with it, but it's so subtle and it's such a tiny amount that I'd still class this as an ex bourbon cask style of whiskey. It also has a lot going for it, it's 46%, it's unchill filtered, it is colored, but still I really rate it. And the main reason I rate it is 
the value, which is why you're watching this video. I picked up this whiskey for about $100, and the thing you've got to know about age is that whiskies can become pretty wildly expensive as the age statement goes up. So for example, the Tamdu 15, same age as this, is $180 in New Zealand. That's a whole Glen Caddam more than the Glen Scotia. Now, to be fair, the Tamdu 15 is aged exclusively in X Sherry casks. That's obviously gonna be more expensive, but you know, it's a lot more regardless. It's also part of the reason why I made it my whiskey of the year last year in 2021. Good value 15 year old. Okay, next one. So the next whiskey on this list is the Glen Livet 12 license Dram. And I honestly think this is the best value whiskey you can get in Scotch whiskey right now. I paid only $71 for this, so it's cheaper than all the rest of these whiskies, but it's bottled at 48%. So it's 2% more than the rest of these whiskies. I think it's great tasting. In fact, I bought two of these. I even bought the one last year called the Illicit Still. I think a lot of us whiskey geeks like to complain about a lot of these big brands not releasing kind of you know, natural presentation whiskies. Whiskies above 46% and unchill filtered and that sort of thing. And credit to Pernod Ricard, they have. They've released this, you know, the normal green livet that's uh, bottled at 40%, that's kind of the watered down version. Um, this one here is $66. So for $5 more, you can get this whiskey, which is just turned up for us whiskey geeks. <music> So the next style of whiskey is the X Sherry Cask style of whiskey. And if you don't know what that means, um, I've done a whole video on the topic. But basically in a nutshell, what you're looking for in an X Sherry Cask style of whiskey is that it will often be slightly sweeter, with some dried fruit notes, and have some spice notes. So the first whiskey is the Bernahaven 12. And I got this for around $85, but I think these days it's going for more around $90, but I still think it's a really good value whiskey. It's a 12 year old, it's 46%, it's unchill filtered, it's natural color. And I've done a whole review on this whiskey if you wanna go a bit deeper onto everything about it. But I would say this bottle is responsible for a lot of people falling into love with the sherry style of scotch. And it's also owned by the same owners who own Deanston Distill. So they both have great sort of 12 year old core range entry level releases that are pretty good value. Although as you go up the age statements with uh, both Bernahaven and Deanston, that's when it can get expensive. But for the 12 year old, I think it's excellent value. So the next whiskey on this list is the Tamdu 12. And I got this bottle for about $77. It's natural color, but it is bottled at 43%, which is a little bit lower than most of the other whiskeys on this list. However, it's exclusively aged in X sherry casks. With most of these other whiskeys, uh, they're kind of aged in a little bit of X bourbon and X sherry as well, like this Bernahaven. But this is exclusively an X sherry, which is a really expensive thing to do for the distillery because an X sherry cask is normally a lot more expensive than an X bourbon cask. So it's great for what you can get for $77. And I did rant about the Tamdu 15 being a lot more expensive than this, but the 12 year old is great value. So if you want to explore the shared style of scotch, I do think this is definitely one to have on the shelf. So the next shade whiskey is a Glen Alecky 12. I got this for about $82 and I think that is good value. It's 46% unchill filter, natural color. My specific version is a slightly older version, so it's slightly lighter in color, but some of the more recent versions have even more sherry influence on them, so they're gonna be a lot darker. So now let's talk about some smoky and peaty whiskies that are also great value. And if you don't know what peaty whiskey even means, I've done a whole video on that topic as well, so go watch that. But basically, it's just whiskies that taste kind of smoky. And the first one on the list is the Le Chag 10. So I think Le Chag 10 is a really great whiskey for anyone into the smoky side of scotch and a great value whiskey. I got this for about $84. It has a lot going for it. It's unchill filter, natural color, age statement of 10 years old and bottled at 46.3%. I think this whiskey specifically has been flying under the radar quite a lot um, up until recently where a lot of people now are realizing how good of a scotch this is is how good of a smoky scotch is right up there with a lot of those really famous Isla whiskies. So the next smoky whiskey I think is great value is the Talisker 10 and I also got this for $84. It's a classic scotch of all the whiskies on the smoky list. I think that this is probably the one you're most likely to get your hands on because it has great availability. It's owned by Diageo so it's sort of all over the world and it's bottled at 
45.8%, it's another 10 year old. And what I really like about the Talisker is it has this really nice kind of like fresh kind of salty smoke that other smoky whiskies don't have. And uh, yeah, it's always been a great go-to for me. So the next good value smoky whiskey I think is the Ardbeg 5 Wee Beastie. So I picked this up for about $82 New Zealand and this had a lot of hype around it about two years ago when it came out and they've kind of kept it as one of their core releases. So this one is 47.4% so it's a punch here, high ABV whiskey than these two and the Ardbeg 10. And some of you might be thinking well five year old you know that's kind of young. Well with PD whiskey uh, smoke and peat is kind of the first flavor to be lost over time and it's kind of swapped out with kind of those nice wood notes that come from the cask. But if you just want kind of like a hot sauce, punch you in the face, smoky whiskey, then this is it. It's young, it's raw, it's powerful, and it's a good price too. So I did want to add kind of an older whiskey to this list and I've chosen the Glen Farkless 21 and I've talked about this whiskey before but I just think it is really good value. I got this for about $170 which sounds like a lot, you know it's more than most of the other whiskies on this list but the thing is with inflation it's those older whiskies that have been hit the hardest, the 18 year olds, the 21 year olds, the 25 year olds, they're the ones where the prices are really skyrocketing. So I really think overall if you want a good value whiskey you should kind of just look for 15 year olds and younger, their prices are only going up you know small amounts like 2% inflationary rate whereas the, there's some older whiskies that have gone up by 50%. For example the Glen Gowen 18 is like, which is younger than this, $237. Redbreast 21, $317. Or the Altmore 21, you know, same age as this, $340. So somehow Glen Farkless have released this 21. It's still kind of a reasonable, affordable price, and it is bottled at 43%, but it's a really old whiskey, so it's great if you want to explore the oldest style of scotch. <laughs> And now onto cast strength whiskies and I've also done a whole video on cast strength whiskies and basically they're whiskies that are bottled at a much higher strength than your average kind of core range bottling. So the first cast strength whiskey is the Aaron Quarter Cask and I think this one is fantastic value for money. I got this one for $99 which is way cheaper than a lot of other cast strength whiskies I can get my hands on in New Zealand. It's got a lot going for it again, non-chill filter, natural colour, it's bottled at 56.2% and that's what you get with cast strength whiskey. It's a a lot more punchy. So with alcohol and strength and that sort of thing, the flavor molecules bond to the alcohol molecules. So the higher the alcohol, the more flavor you're gonna get out of the whiskey. Um, but I do recommend adding a little bit of water, you know, to open it up a bit when you do try it. And also it's aged in quarter casks. So basically what that is, is that it's these smaller casks, which means that the spirit has a greater ratio to wood contact. So it can do things with the wood a lot faster than a much bigger cask. What I generally think is probably the best value for money cask drink whiskey I can get in New Zealand. But if you pay $5 more, you can get the Aaron Sherry cask, which is also a cask drink whiskey. It's bottled at 55.8% and it's aged in sherry casks. So it's basically a sherry bomb, a bit like the Abelot Abana or the Tam Du uh, Bat Strength whiskey. So this is a good option as well. So the next cask drink whiskey on the list is the Elick. Now this is an interesting whiskey. It's an undisclosed bottling, meaning that you know it doesn't tell you which distillery it's from. But I have heard from some sources that it could be from Lagavulin, but it might not be. This one comes in at 58%, so a nice punchy cask drink whiskey, but it only comes in at $80. So in fact, it's the whiskey I'm gonna use for my cask project. I'm gonna take the sherry out of that cask, um, I'm gonna put a few bottles of this into the air and then age it for a certain amount of time, which I got a video coming up about that. It's a young whiskey though, so it's very punchy, um, but you know, 80 bucks for an Isla whiskey that's at 58%, I mean, it's pretty good. So the next whiskey on this list is also a cast drink whiskey from an undisclosed distillery on Isla. So this one is from the independent bottling Hunt Lang, it's called the Scarabus, and it's bottled at 57%, and I got this for around $87, $88. So you know, it's only $8 more than this. And I would say it's probably worth that money, I do like it that much more, 
than the Eileach. So hopefully now you can find some good tasty whiskies on this list that are also great value in your market. But I'm also keen to hear from you down in those comments, what are some whiskies you think I might have missed off this list? Or what are some of the whiskies on this list that are actually really pricey in your market? Write it down in the comments below and thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. And above all, make sure you share and enjoy beauty.